Previously on Drake Paragon. We are just heading into Reykjavik in Iceland. It's been a hellish trip. 45 knots. Up to 48 were the highest that I saw. So what does it say about Reykjavik and birthing? Let's go get a drink. <laughs> From Greenland to Iceland. Yes. Yes. So it's the 7th of September and we are in Reykjavik, Iceland. We're going to the hot springs tomorrow, but today we're kind of finishing up some things for our push-off day, preparing things and changing the oil and doing laundry. And there is this like crazy, insane gale that has blown in. It started off a little breezy this morning. Wind increased, got to about 20 knots, 25. Now it's at like 30, 35. And I need to go check on the laundry. kind of crazy. There are white caps and the wall here, like every once in a while a wave will like totally get it like, like fly over. I'm so glad we're not out on the boat, uh, that we're safely tied up and just kind of chilling out here. This would not be a fun day to be out anywhere. We're actually at high tide right now also. It actually goes down four, five meters, 15 or more feet. This gangplank gets to be what feels like almost like a 40, 45 degree angle. We're behind the Harpo Concert Hall, which is over there, which is really beautiful. And when it's sunny, all of those multicolored glass tiles reflect the rainbows into the water. But today's just kind of insane. I can't believe that there are people fishing. This is one of the markers to come into the harbor. Man, look at that water out there. Water keeps splashing up over the wall here. Yeah, I'm gonna go check on the laundry. I forgot to put something in. It just started a little while ago, so. They have a building with uh, very fast Wi-Fi. They have a computer inside that you can use, but the Wi-Fi actually spreads to the boat, and I don't even need like an antenna to, to pick it up, so that makes it nice. And then on the side, they have laundry, and the laundry, is free. It's included. So we have been washing pretty much everything that we possibly can. So throw that open. It's probably going to fog up the camera, but two washing machines, one dryer. This is the last of it. I think we've done six or seven loads of laundry. The fact that the laundry is included really makes up for the fact that it was $20 a load in Greenland. It was $60 for three loads of laundry. The first one I did myself because I thought if you did it yourself that it would be cheaper, but it wasn't. So I just like wasted an entire day. And she's like, oh cool. She's like, this girl's gonna like do my job for me. <laughs> that was good to know. All right, closing the door, bracing it because that would be absolutely amazing if it flew open and whacked me in the face. Man, look at those clouds coming in, eh? I'm actually glad we didn't go up to the hot springs today. It's fun to go to the hot springs when it's like snowing and cold, but, uh, but this, <laughs> this might be a little much. I'm actually going to come up here on the top of the 
of the marina, so hopefully I don't get splashed by the water, but I wanted to see it out here. Look at that. All the clouds have moved in. This is a really beautiful mountain over there. When it's sunny, you can't really see it now. I feel like those weather channel guys come out. They're standing there in the middle of like a hurricane going like, well, it's a little windy out here right now. <laughs> so I have to go back and sew up uh, a bag that needs repairing. Greg just finished an oil change. We need to switch out the propane and then we're gonna maybe try to make a run up to the grocery store tonight. I, I just got wet. <laughs> I'm gonna get down off of here because it sucks. Oh. I think I'm gonna get back on the boat and uh, maybe I can wash this. Like I said, it's a little windy out here. So I'm gonna go change into some dry clothes and then uh, finish up here and then Head out for a much deserved drink. Hi. Hey. Have you met the folks on this boat? No, I've seen them. It doesn't really look like they're here now, though, eh? I saw them this morning. Oh, well, then there you go. A big boat. So funny, Paragon looks teeny next to She sure does. So it's kind of a gray, slightly rainy, slightly not day. But Ainit has invited us out for lunch. So we're meeting him up at this place called the Laundromat or the something. I think it might actually be a laundromat slash restaurant. Even though Drake isn't really feeling very well, Blah. we're still going out. How did that go? Huh? Drake is feeling a little bit under the weather today. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. It's a nice day and we're gonna go out and have a lovely lunch. The worst day to get a cold, man. Is there a good day? Well, there could be better days and just before you're about to sail 700 miles across the Atlantic Ocean in autumn. Woo! <laughs> Look at that! Oh, it's windy. You're whiny? I'm tired. So it looked like not tomorrow, but the day after, maybe the winds are like not crazy windy enough for us to go the 130 nautical miles to the Vestiment Islands to the south of Iceland. But then are we going to get stuck there? The thing about the Vestiment Islands is that they're closer to Ireland than Reykjavik is uh, by like 100 nautical miles, by like one whole day of sailing in turn a <laughs> an eight-day sailing trip into a seven-day sailing trip if we depart from the Vestiment Islands. Would we get stuck there? I don't know. I don't have that crystal ball. <laughs> but it looked like maybe the beginning of what might be a good weather window like five days out from now. But it's too early to tell. But if it does, it'd be better to push off from the Vestiment Islands rather than push off from Reykjavik because it's closer to Ireland and we want to get across that expanse of water as fast as we can because winter is coming. Winter is coming! Autumn is upon us. The safe weather windows are becoming fewer and smaller. You sound so dramatic. That's frequent. Winter is coming. The autumn gales. The autumn gales. Or we could just stay in Iceland. And I'm sh I don't know. Do you think we could? I think we could. I mean, it's got fast internet. It's got nice cafes. Yeah. It's got all of these nice hot spring places. Yes, it does. Which is like three bucks to get in, and then you can wait in the hot spring water. Would you love a winter of just like being in hot springs? There's a question of would they let us? And there's a question of if the government allows us to stay, then would the Yacht Club in Reykjavik allow us to stay? 
I think would it would be... actually be really nice to it spend a winter cold, in Iceland. Wow. It'd be really cold. You've got a jacket. Yeah. I mean, it snows a lot here in Iceland. I've heard doesn't... that. I have my mom send my boots. Yeah, we could burn through a lot of diesel to heat the boat, and I could get to editing right away. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? How are you? Hello, guys. Hi. Nice day. Is it great? It's a little breezy, but it's yeah. great day. So, wine? Or did you want cider or both? Wine. Wine? Yeah. All right, I'll be back. I'll be in there in just a minute. It's going really good. What you do? Where you been? What you done today? You'll never guess what happened today. What happened to you? Okay, so I went to the art gallery. Yeah. And then I realized, you know what? There's like a maritime museum like two minutes away and I went to the maritime museum. It was 1500 kroner for a tour of the museum and a tour, like a personal tour of the Coast Guard ships. We went around the whole deck of the ship, all the parts of the ship, including the engine room. It was called the Odin. It was the ship involved in the Cod Wars. And on the tour, everybody was like asking me all these questions going, you sailed here? Wow! And yeah. what are the seas like? And is it rocky? And they were asking me loads of questions and the tour guide was kind of like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We were checking out the engine room and there was this, I thought it was an engineer or something just like working on the boat. He goes, oh, this is, this is Captain Pulsey, the ex-captain of the ship. The guys just went into the engine room, so I followed them and then I said, would you mind if I actually go and ask the captain a quick question? Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, I can go with you if you want. And I said, oh, no, no, if you, it's okay. Like, I'll just go in. So I went in and I said, sorry, uh, policy? And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hi, and, you know, I just came here on, on a sailboat. Would you mind if I asked you one or two questions? And he goes, yeah, 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 what can I help you with? I told him our plan. He took me up to the bridge. Like, this is like a museum, but he opened up the drawers. Yeah. Took out all these charts and he told us like a particular route and he told us what to watch out for and there's like two areas that we should just not go. And I was sitting there going, is this really happening? Like I went for a good tour and met the captain. He said if you're sailing down to Ireland, don't go here, don't go here. If you're sailing to uh, Faroes, don't go here. If you're sailing to Scotland, don't go here. It was just really random. It's amazing. Really lucky as well because the guys are like, oh it's only the captain. And they got off the boat, and I was like, it's the captain! <laughs> Fantastic. What a cool restaurant. It's the meatball. With Looks like bacon. bacon. <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> Barbecue chicken burger. Nice. Oh. Mm. Chicken and bacon and special sauce and crazy fries. You can't really do more than And it's down there, a guy just walked in with a big bag of dirty clothes. Yeah. You do your laundry. That's why I did barge here. Do your laundry, have lunch, grab a beer. How many can you have like this kind of funky experience and do your laundry? <laughs> and do your voyage planning on the nautical charts on the wall. There we are right here in Reykjavik. And we're considering going to the Vestman Island right there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe to Faro or maybe straight to somewhere in Ireland. Handy to have a map on the wall right at the table where we sat down. What's it like down there? It's really cool. It's only three washers and three dryers. And then this long table that sits like six where you can, you know, hang out on your computer. They have Wi-Fi down there. All along the walls are these massive cushions like the size of this table. And then all along the far wall there are these cubbies that the kids can like climb into. It's really cool. And I guess a lot of people who do laundry must bring their kids because there's like a ton of kids down there and like six adults. So. It's windy today in Reykjavik at the Yacht Club. I got some extra lines put out. And uh, so I'm not really worried. But it is windy. You can see that this dock here acts as a sort of breakwater protecting those boats along the concert hall building. We're getting a little bit of, of wave action coming in and hitting us here. It was pretty windy earlier, 
So much so that Paragon was leaning over by about 15 degrees to the port. Uh, we've got two huge sailboats parked behind Paragon. They are both in the 60 foot range, I think. Enormous boats with big crews. Algol is a steel charter boat from France. I've met the captain, Jean, and he is uh, the nicest man. He said he'd be happy to give us a little tour of his boat and uh, maybe sit down and have a chat later on today, hopefully. Paragon's leaning over. And then over here we have the Contra Hall in Reykjavik, this amazing building that I hear it cost a ton of money to build. The symphony plays here twice a week, except for in the summertime, they're on break. This building is Brokey Yacht Club in Reykjavik. If you are a four and five boat and come into Reykjavik to clear in, the harbor master will direct you to come to this place. They don't have that many slips, basically this wall dock over here where we are. The Yacht Club does have these slips here, but they're for smaller boats. I'd say like maybe 35 is the max, except for at the very end of the T. Oh man. Take a look out over here. It is a windy day. Sure wouldn't want to be sailing in this. Anyway. Brokey Yacht Club, those chairs right up there, that is the office. We're not gonna go in there right now. But we will go in here. There we go. Always lock this door. Unless your girlfriend's coming in behind you. Here's the clubhouse area. They've got a microwave, coffee maker, a little electric stove top there, this little bar set up. All these tables, some nice couch seating in the corner there, and the TV. I've come here to use the internet. They have free Wi-Fi. There's the lights. Welcome to the clubhouse of the Yacht Club in Reykjavik. I'll just show you before I sit down and get started. Over here, we have the shower room, which is absolutely excellent. Most of Iceland uses geothermal energy for heating water, but not here. Here we have an electric water heater. That's it right there. Hooked up to this shower here, which is just absolutely wonderful when it's hot. I'm just gonna go make myself comfy on the couch down here and check the weather. Okay, I wanted to take a shower, but... Well. But uh, the water heater's like taking forever to heat up the water. It's still not ready. But I did check the weather and it's gonna get worse from what it is right now. It's already quite windy. We are right on the other side of this breakwater. Waves are coming around the corner and we're right on the end. So we're getting a lot of the wave action as well as the wind. This is the entrance, by the way, into Reykjavik Harbor. You have the yellow pointy thing there, and the yellow pointy thing here. They're sort of like lighthouses. The one over there flashes green. This one flashes red, marking the entrance to Reykjavik Harbor. I don't know if you can hear that wind, but it is windy. The weather forecast for this, for this night is uh, basically 50 knot winds all over Iceland, like north, south, east, west, Iceland, everything's about 50 knots. I would say it's a major storm. These two enormous sailboats here, they're rafted up to each other. And I am going to now follow their example and start tying lines from Paragon, not just to the cleats on the dock here, but also to the land. See the big, big cleats on land there. Boy. Ugh. It is fucking windy. Look at this. No, I don't like it. I don't like it.
trains going from the cement post here to Paragon as well as from the dock fleets. A lot of doubling, tripling up on the lines and adding chain protection everywhere. See this enormous cleat here. Everybody uh, <laughs> tied up to that thing. See the lines going from that to these two boats here. Sucks. I hate this. supposed to get the windiest at uh, about 9 o'clock tonight, 10 o'clock and last through till <coughs> basically 9 in the morning. So we'll have 12 hours of these 50 knot winds. I'm on the boat, he said. <laughs> Tropical drinks and bikinis, he said. Warm sun. You want to get certified for scuba diving? up all night checking these lines over and over especially for chafe <coughs> thanks for moving the fenders the hat looks really cute and it's warm I want to get one too you should. okay show me show me where we can buy a hat like that for me I will be thrilled can we go inside now <laughs> 